with the CM Punk promo calling out Adam Page, and Adam Page did not know it was coming, and John Moxley and CM Punk going back and forth to create a title match before All Out. When you're watching this, and you're watching live, I was, I was watching your tweets, what, 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 what was your sense of what was going on here in the ring with Punk and Moxley and then Page kind of getting thrown into this? Uh, oh, I had a, I have a ton of opinions. I've been dying to talk to you about this. I really have all week. Seriously, uh, I was looking forward to having this conversation with you because yeah, you have this unbelievable insight for pro wrestling. So I, I, I love to throw these concepts and ideas to you and you tell me if, if it's whack or not. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, this is our new roller derby conversation. Please let Dave know we don't do roller <laughs> roller jam or roller derby. We talk about Taekwondo in the 80s. That is <laughs> exactly. that is our that's exactly. our roller derby now. Uh, I. I you know, watching it live, I thought, you know, he came out and, you know, he's like, I have two things. One, so one important, one not so important. When he went after Hangman, like, this is me. And, and I think I'm pretty good with picking stuff up. He, it was a really um, clunky promo, right? A clunky shoot. And at that moment, it got me thinking, I'm like, oh, is this, you know, listen, at the end of the day, we cover wrestling, but like we could get worked. I'm I'm fine yeah, with that. I no, have no 100%. problem being wrong on this because that means they did their job to to uh, phenomenally. Uh, when I saw it, I initially thought, well, okay, that's weird, that's wonky. I wonder if he's coming out. Like I didn't see it as a shoot. And when he didn't come out, and he called him a coward, and he said something about the apology has to be as loud as whatever. I I, I forgot the words, but I was like, okay. This is interesting. What is going on here? And then you yeah. start hearing all the information coming out that, you know, he went off script. He went into business for himself. Uh, there was an issue backstage. You know, I don't know what what is happening because I haven't been told if it's a work or if it's a shoot. So I like this. I like to be in the middle of like, oh, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I do have to say it is very counterintuitive when you call out this this mega babyface star in his hometown. Uh, home state, right? West Virginia. And you don't, you make him look like a fool at, 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 to a point, right? You, you call him a coward. You say he's not coming out. Uh, very strange. Very strange. However, a great point in our chat room by Sam3 on YouTube. It's a week later and everybody is still talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. We saw mm -hmm. this happen with MJF. We're seeing it happen here. You know, if it is a work, I think they are doing something a little bit different here that we, we, you know, it's breaking that Vince McMahon WWE predictability that we have been conditioned to where we know when something is, is a, is a work shoot, or we know when something is, is legitimate, you know, because we have 40 years of conditioning or 30 years of conditioning to that type of writing or that type of wrestling. This is a whole different ball game. This is Tony Khan's project. This is Tony Khan's company. He, he's a very smart guy. Uh, he really understands the importance of keeping a captivated audience where they, they you know, you, you walk that fine line. We saw with MJF now, even though there was truth to it, it's now obviously it's turned into something that's going to play on TV. Yeah. I would like to believe that there was an issue. They worked it out. And now they thought of this great idea where, you know, this, this reality stuff works. The MJF stuff worked. Why not try it with Hangman and do something positive here? Now, I'm not saying that's my opinion. I don't know. I really have no clue. I'm just playing both sides of this to see, yep. you know, what makes sense and what doesn't. The only other thing I did not really like, and this was, you know, this kind of like, it was weird. When John Moxley came out and that Snow Angel thing and he was talking over the, the theme playing for Mox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, what a, what a dick heel CM Punk is. <laughs> yeah. What, a, what, you know? Uh, what, what, a, what a jerk. Like you don't talk over the guy's theme. You don't do snow in, but you know what? He's a great heel. He's very easy not to like. And cause he's supposed you know, to be a heel here though. I think CM Punk is forever going to be a heel. I, I think even when he's a true baby face, there's nothing about him that screams, you know, nice guy, baby. I'm not, I, listen, no, no, no attack on him. I don't know him personally. Okay. But, but let's he's take very it back good to do that. Yeah. Let's take it back to double or nothing. Yeah. Right. He wins that match. He comes out the next Wednesday and it is all about the fans, all about the greatest 
time of, of his career as far as enjoyment with wrestling and the locker room is fantastic and all of those things, right? Yeah. He was very well on his way to being a giant baby face. Now, like you said, there's always an edge to him that, you know, I, I'm sure people can catch on that. He's, you know, maybe he's not the, the, ha the happiest go luckiest guy out there, but I think that's also part of his charm. But this is where I was confused because he got the hero's return the week before coming out at the end of that show after Moxley beats Jericho. And then, you know, the crowd goes nuts. People loved it. They're expecting, you know, they were expecting to figure out what's going to happen. What's the main event all out. And so I think most fans thought okay we're gonna hear from him what's the reason you know what's the sure. beef like what's going on what is he gonna do and he comes out immediately in attack mode so i was kind of put off by that i'm just wondering like what changed from when he left to last week to now to where he was so aggressive in uh, in the story and uh i don't know like a lot of people they want there's a there's a there's a small I guess I would say it's a small corner of the wrestling universe who want CM Punk to come across as the old CM Punk and so they can go see he hasn't changed he's still the yeah. same guy like there's a there's a small part of of that wrestling fandom that that wants that to happen and I like I don't care like you know we watch this stuff we don't necessarily root for individual people to as rest like we root for what's best for business or what the outcomes are exactly. or what's the best yeah. thing for our podcast that we can talk about yeah. and this is absolutely 100 <laughs> percent an amazing thing for us to talk about like you said it kept everyone talking but i guess that's you know, my, yeah, that would be thing, my Garrett, yeah you, you said something so well right like he, he it was a lot of people uh you know there are people that think you know it's the old cm punk and you know they want him to be this jerk at the end of the day also, right? We got to look at it this way. He could be as mad as possible at Hangman Page. But are you that mad at Tony Khan that you're going to, you know, this is, if this, if it is 100% to shoot, which a lot of people believe. Again, I don't know. I, I, I really, I'm very conflicted on it because nobody's told me either way. Mm -hmm. However, if it is a shoot, it is extremely unprofessional. And it's a, it's a huge, huge F you to the company. That has given him this opportunity that didn't take the title off of him. He did a stupid thing and he broke his foot, right? And yep. like I'm just I'm just throwing out all, all the pieces. And he comes out there the second night he's out there and he starts burying the top baby face that's homegrown in the company, uh, in in a program in like a, a a thing where you know he's not coming out, right? You don't even give him the opportunity to. What does that say about your respect for the company more than just Hangman? You know, at the end of the day, it's still a business and you can be mm -hmm. wrestling has seen numerous, numerous a-holes in the industry. I, I mean, we, it doesn't work for me, brother. Right. We've seen that. We've seen that from many, many people. However, do you burn the only bridge that you have left in the business? Because you're not going to WWE. That That's by your choice, too. But they don't want you and you don't want them. And this uh, is the I, home. This I, I kind of feel like. I kind of feel like Triple I mean, H would take CM Punk back. <laughs> I, I, I never say I never, don't think, right? but pro wrestling, like but. you, like you, I don't think CM Punk would necessarily go unless it was just for like more than Brock Lesnar money. Listen, but okay, so twenty million dollars. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can but afford it. I, I don't. I. He's not. CM Punk is not a dumb guy at all. He's very, no. very smart, very intelligent guy. Brilliant. People that know him know how smart he is. That I've spoken to. I think he's way smarter than to go out there and to, you know, hurt the company. So there's a reason. Because I I don't know, man. I, you know, I, I would I would prefer to think that there's a reason for everything that we're seeing. Uh, I don't want to see something like that happen. I don't like when something like that happens. It's a bad thing for a company that's up and coming. That's had a great three year run. Do you want that representing your TV? And do you not punish the person that does that? That's my yes. question. Do you punish him? Because what would happen in WWE if he did that? What would be the outcome? I don't know. 
I, I think that outcome would be much different if Vince was in charge than now Triple H is in charge. We may, maybe that's different. Okay, so here, here's my question. Here's my other question about yeah. this, which is, do you think it was a leverage play? Because CM Punk, the again, the hero's return the, the week before, uh, John Moxley was not supposed to be the champion, right? This was supposed to be CM Punk's rain we were we were supposed to see what happened when tony tony got his guy remember cm punk was the a1 person that tony from day one wanted according to a bunch of different places dave Meltzer included and so we were going to see what tony had as far as booking was concerned for his guy to be the champion and then it didn't happen because he got hurt moxley comes in moxley kind of shows his value overall right he's like one of the most Huge. valuable guys in wrestling because he immediately slid in and took over and became the top guy again for them that that they needed you know it could have also been jericho if they had wanted but there was no kenny there was no mjf so moxley was the guy and so now you have punk top guy moxley top guy MJF, his his return is probably the the most anticipated thing. If you're an AW fan, how do they do that? So I just wonder if Punk realizes that he's like, oh man, like this is not necessarily only me as as the the biggest star in this company. There are other people who are very valuable, and and now you know how do I separate myself from those guys? And I'm not saying that yeah. his his remark about Paige wasn't like a personal shot. I'm sure it was. But but I also think sort of like what you said, he thought the edge to it, the sort of the reality based thing. Him and Triple H did this like, you know, how many ever years ago, right? That like they were digging for the reality stuff. And I think he thought that this may rankle some feathers, but also at the same time. It, 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 it's a way for him to go, man, ratings aren't great. I want the ratings to be up when I'm champion so that it shows my value. And this yeah. is the way that I think that, that I can do hey, it. You know what else is kind of like, uh, again, not just a thought, right? We're, we're having fun here. We're, we're yes. speculating where we're, this is, this is the fun conversations to have. This is that conversation you have with your buddy at the bar. You know yes. what this smells like to me? It really smells like Sean and, and Brett in 97. You yes. cut this promo. You brought up something. How dare you bring up Sunny Days? How dare you bring up Colt Cabana? <laughs> I go out there. I bury you. I go in the back. I say I'm never dropping the title to this guy. I'm never <laughs> losing to this guy. You know, like CM Punk saw a lot of that, right? He dealt with that struggle of guys not wanting to, not wanting to lose to him, not wanting to put him over. They thought he's not as good. He had enemies. Uh, you know. Th- is he the type to go to AEW and then turn around, win the title, and say, I'm never dropping the belt to you, kid? I, I have a hard time with that aspect of the story that came out that he said, apparently. I, I, if he did say it, man, what a great psychop this is from Tony Khan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what a great, uh, you know, uh, manipulative booking to, to make people think this is real. If it is true, man, you know, that's really disappointing to hear. I, I really, at the end of the day, you're in a business, you work for a company, you, you are there to fill the role a, and to elevate other people. It's a team. And yes, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, do you, do you see him saying that I'm never going to put him over? <sighs> okay. So, you know, obviously, unless it's was Sean, the one that reported that I, I I'm trying to remember, I, I want to give the I right. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. I want. I want. I, th- I thought it was Sean. I want to give the right uh, acknowledgement. But I thought the other part of the story was that he. I think wasn't he was trying to give Hangman advice, and Hangman was like, "I don't need it, or I don't want it, or something like that." And then that is what precipitated Punk making that statement. Like there was, you know, I, I, I'm as most people who who listen to Wrestling Observer Radio know, I'm a big Beverly Hills 90210 fan. This is like yes. right out of Beverly Hills 90210, <laughs> man. Like that's, I think it's, that's why it's so interesting to me. 
but like you yeah, know Tori like Spelling that aspect... was in the back you didn't know that yeah yeah Tori Spe- i mean J- J- the jungle boy his luke perry's son is hanging it out it was right joe there lanza it, it was jo- okay that's what so it, was. it was joe that's lanza was. yeah from voices of wrestling there there we want to give the proper which by credit. the way no knock at joe no knock at joe i'm giving him the credit on this i'm not i'm not saying that didn't happen but you know like it's wrestling at the end of the day and you got you second guess everything yes. and you know if it is a good if it is a story they could turn this into something really, really interesting. If it's not sure. a story, I'm beyond disappointed. Yeah. Beyond disappointed.